digital design previously was quite influenced by the world of graphic design um, in that the language that we use, so it's just like, you know, above the fold came from the print world. Um, it does feel like we're getting back to that restrictive um, space again, especially like with like native versus web and all these other, um, to me, meaningless debates when it's like we're ignoring user experience. I mean, what's your, exp what's your feelings on um, some of these sort of like language being influences and the where we are right now in the industry in terms of like influence? So I feel like we've gone from a world where we took our language and our inspiration from print yep. and that we applied those constraints to the web to a world now where we're taking our language and our constraints from native apps and we're applying that to the web. And what I'd love for us to do is to end up in a world where we have language and ideas that are native to the web itself, that embrace the fact that the web is hypertext, not just a, another way to build native apps. One of the projects my team works on is the Progressive Web App Directory. And we've been trying to collect a lot of people's progressive web apps and capture metrics, currently Lighthouse scores, but we have plans to bring in other metrics. And when you see a few hundred PWAs all in one place and you go through them all, you start to see common conventions. But like they, design patterns, UI. Exactly. Such as the but, hamburger menu? So the hamburger menu is a classic one where it's in there, even though most people on native, in the native app world are looking at it and saying, well, actually, we're taking key functionality in our app and we're hiding it away from the users. And we're discovering people can't find it. But if, and you've seen people redesign to go away from the hamburger menu. If you look at, say, the YouTube app, yep. and we're going to interfaces that expose the functionality, make it discoverable, make it obvious. And I feel like for the web, we have to go through that same process but it can't just be following the tail lights of native. It has to be saying, if I'm building something for the web, it has to be responsive because on the web, the same URL can be seen on a four inch iPhone all the way to a 30 inch monitor. And so if it doesn't respond and Progressive Web App Directory is guilty of this, uh, we are working on fixing it. We end up with a world where it looks fine on your phone, but on your massive desktop monitor, there's a little bit of functionality swimming in an ocean of white space. Yeah. I mean, do you feel that uh, we're abandoning responsive web design? Because it felt like <laughs> for a while, maybe 10 years ago, there was like the revelation of grids and that we, we are, we're, designing for the, we're designing in the wrong way, so hence producing the wrong thing. So fixed pixels became like, you know, abandoned. But do you feel that responsive web design is now being abandoned uh, because we're following like very uh, strong native patterns as opposed to following the web. So I think yes, but it's the weird thing is we now have the tools to do responsive really well. We have the understanding and just as we get into that, it's become something that's boring and people aren't doing it. They're sort of going, well, actually, here's an adaptive solution or here's a thing that assumes we're gonna have a mobile dot or an M dot site that's gonna be very app-like and then we'll have some legacy thing for the desktop. And yeah, it, is, it does feel like an abandonment of responsive design, but we don't have something to go to instead. And I feel like we still, when we think about designing for the web, we're still stuck in what our tools give us. So if our tools assume we design with a bunch of static images, a set of static screens, yeah we're stuck in that box. Whereas we should be thinking, what is the content? What is the sub-screen module? What is the thing that we want the user to be able to do on all of these screens? How does the user get from this page to this page to this page? Notice I'm using print language. Yep. Because I can say page to page and people know what I mean. Or I can say screen to screen and people think I'm talking about native apps. Yes. But we don't have a thing that is native to the web. Probably my favorite, example of something anybody ever did about this is a PhD thesis by a guy called Tom Fumaro. Okay. And it tries to tell us that if you want to make an argument in a hypertext environment, you can't assume the user is going to start at the beginning at your front page and then linearly go through it. They're going to come in at some arbitrary point and you've got to give them multiple paths to get to all of the relevant bits of the argument. And since his work 15, 16 years ago, there's been very little that I've seen, and there's been very little that I've seen make it into people's production web apps or pro production websites. Yeah. In fact, one of the questions I often ask myself is, what if we hadn't called these things progressive web apps? 
What if we called them progressive websites? What would be different? What would we have changed? Which conventions would we have established that we don't have now? So do you think the word app has um, influenced us to design from the UI to the patterns and conventions of native? Yes. And if you were to imagine a world where we were saying, well, actually, you know what? We're happy that the web is not like an app environment. We like the fact that the web is a hypermedia environment. And when you look at the web and people, they take the hypertext aspects for granted, just like people take responsiveness for granted. And then it's very easy to say, well, actually this works on my phone and it works on my other phone. It's responsive enough. But isn't that a, a problem with say mobile first and us focusing, going from the extreme of desktop only to the extreme of only mobile, hence the M dot websites or some of the challenges that PWAs face. I think you're right. I think we also confuse building something that is mobile first with building something that is native to the device the user has. So if you think about a app or a website that really exploits the user's device, they're going to ask what capabilities exist in this device that don't exist in other devices. And as these capabilities evolve, as new capabilities get added, we should be asking ourselves, what can we do now that we couldn't do before? So probably the most interesting new capability that's been added to devices is fingerprint. And you're seeing more and more apps say, well, actually, instead of typing your username and password, once you've logged in once, just use your fingerprint from then on, because we know it's you. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems like there is a potentially another debate. And I've always been um, frustrated by, you know, so the whole flat versus skeuomorphic or native versus web, it almost feels like native web or native web and app web. Is that the new debate? I mean, is this possibly damaging again? Like, you know, this another, you know, million conference talks, <laughs> million videos, million books written about, you know, the, the patterns. I mean, what do you think the solution is before um, we uh, create another uh, scandal? So I think a lot of people see native and web as converging. And a very long time ago, I found this wonderful Greek word, chiasmus, the idea that you have two ideas and they meet and cross over. So you end up in a world where apps are much more hypertextual and websites are much more app-like and they cross over and they borrow features from each other. So it's not quite convergence. But and I don't think the native versus web or even the app web versus native web um, argument is productive. But I do think looking at each, each side and asking what can we borrow from them whilst preserving our own identity. Because if you get progressive web apps everywhere that all look and feel like native apps, that isn't a victory for the web because now you've just found a way to build native apps using JavaScript. Yeah. You've thrown away URLs, you've thrown away hypertextuality, you've thrown away the value the browsers give you. If you load your progressive web app full screen, there's no URL, there's no way to share, there's no way to browse beyond the confines of that native app without ending up in a very confused environment. At which point, couldn't you just use the native app? <laughs> so we have to make sure that the web doesn't lose its soul. Yeah, because there's no point with making everything app-like if you lose your soul. Can you be a perfectly good developer without designing? Yes. Would you be a more empathetic developer if you knew more about design and aesthetic? Yes, I think you would. And I think that's, there's nothing wrong with saying that.